Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be talking to the man who reinvented hides or blinds, you call them in North America, for wildlife photography. The multi, multi, multi award winning Hungarian wildlife photographer, Bentsa Marte. Because of course one of the big challenges in wildlife photography is that most wildlife is quite shy. You have to conceal yourself in some way in order to get that really close shot and that often means using a hide. Which wildlife photographers have been doing for 130 years or more? The pioneers of course were the Kearton brothers Richard and Cherry who were doing it in the late 1800s. They camouflaged themselves in a specially made haystack, pretended to be a tree and I think best of all, they hid inside a hollowed out bullock. They actually bought the bullock from the local butcher, skinned it themselves and then sent it to a taxidermist to be rebuilt. Don't ask me what they used as a peephole. But eventually they realised that their quite complex hides uh, weren't really necessary and they replaced them with much more simple tent-like hides like the ones we use today, like the one I'm in now. There are many variations on the theme of course but generally speaking the really simple tent-like hides like this are far from perfect. Mammals can smell you for a start and the sound of a clicking camera even if it is hidden actually will startle most wildlife away. The other big problem is you've got your lens sticking out of the front of the hide and if you move that too quickly then that's going to scare everything away. But for me the biggest challenge is you can't really see very much. You know, A typical hide like this is fantastic but you're looking through a little hole at the front, typically above the lens, through mesh. You can't really see what's coming from the left or the right or from above. And that means that they really are far from perfect. Enter Benza Marte. He's taken the concept to a whole other level. He builds his hides in the treetops, underwater, underground, with one-way glass, artificial lighting, whatever it takes to get the perfect shot. And he makes them comfortable too. Many have armchairs, beds, fridges, toilets, even Wi-Fi, so you can check your emails while you're waiting for the next close encounter. <laughs> well, I have to say I've known Benzer for many, many years and he never does anything by half. I remember once he, he drove to Greece with 300 kilos of frozen fish just to photograph pelicans and he spends months on end on his own in his hides photographing all sorts of other birds. But it definitely pays off. He's won so many awards in so many international and national competitions. Probably, I would guess, more than anyone else on the planet. I began during our Zoom chat by asking him how much he plans his images in advance. I should just apologise before we start to Benzer for the subtitles, but the internet connection with the wilds of Hungary, well maybe it was the wilds of the UK, I don't know, but the internet connection wasn't that great. And I just want to make sure that you can hear what he's saying. Also, in the interview, you'll see it's illustrated with Benz's own photographs and they're all taken from inside the hides that we're going to be talking about. And I think this is the biggest challenge to, to take an image and show it for uh, somebody anywhere and they, they can get, uh, if they can get a, a similar feeling than you, when you've been on, on the location, then it can be a good image. And it's a big challenge because... Uh, the distance, the background, the lights, uh, almost nothing is perfect. To see a nice action and, and uh, enjoy it, let's say it's uh, level one, and taking an image of it, uh, a documentary image of it is, let's say, level, uh, level five, and take an image which is uh, it, it's good to show for uh, anybody or put it on the wall, it's level uh, 55. More than ten times uh, difficult. And uh, if I uh, if I have an idea what I'm looking for, uh, I can uh, I can be a little bit uh, a few steps forward uh, than my subjects. Uh, and that's why I like to create uh, um, environment and situations and heights. Uh, because then, uh, uh, then I can uh, get my, myself in, in a good position for photography. It's mainly good level, good background and good lights. So uh, to get this position, it's, it's sometimes it's, uh, it's a quite big job to, to create all the circumstances. 
but uh, uh, I don't like to pushing it too much. So I I I, uh, I like when I'm sitting in a comfortable chair like like now. The circumstances are perfect for photography, and the nature uh, is a director. And uh, if we say I'm planning my images, it's true, but uh, at the same time, uh, the nature is a director because uh, the most most of the time, the, the best images are not the, the really planned images, but what I get just by luck. And uh, every everybody in every situation have uh, have a good chance to to get some luck. But the question if if the circumstances are good enough to, to capture it. So you've built hides for wildlife photography all over the world, haven't you? Ah, there are many, many countries in the world. I wouldn't say all over, but uh, the first country I started uh, building hides was in Costa Rica, and then in Brazil, uh, and then Africa. And now I'm, I'm most focused uh, in my home country. Uh, it was a nice challenge to go there and see uh, new cultures and meeting in the, with the... Uh, uh, interesting, strange, uh, different people. Uh, it was a good learning process and I still like to go back. But if you really want to do it in high level, uh, it's not, uh, not so easy, 10,000 kilometers from your house. How many hides have you built over the years? It's not my, not my, not my numbers uh, because uh, uh, sometimes we, we work in 10 times more time uh, with one hide than with, uh, with the usual hide and sometimes I like it more so I have no idea, over a hundred. <laughs> That's a lot of hides. How do you choose the locations to get the, the very best photographic opportunities? When I build a hide, usually I build a, a test hide before, a very simple, a cheap one just to see if everything goes the same way as we thought before. Uh, the beauty thing in this job, there are no copy paste. Uh, one, which one hide in one situation is working in one country in one place is not going to work in other mm -hmm. place. So even if I do it for 20 years, uh, I wouldn't say what I did 10 times before. Uh, it work. It, it used to work 10 times, but maybe not the not the next time uh, because it's nature. Presumably, you don't do it all yourself. Very important part of this job, like uh, almost all the other jobs, uh, to, to having a good team. And uh, to building up a good team and finding the right people who, who like uh, to work with you and liking the, the aim, what you, sp you spot, uh, it's sometimes a bigger uh, challenge than just do the job with you. Now, now, why are so many of your hides so luxurious? Shouldn't you be roughing it as a wildlife photographer? I don't know why, but before uh, I start building, uh, uh, let's say, luxury hides, nobody t uh, tried before. And I spend uh, thousands of hours in cold water, leeches on my body, or, uh, or in 40 uh, degrees. And I, I say to myself, I, I like to do this job uh, until I'm retired, which is not going to be before uh, I'm getting 90. So I, I like to uh, protect my body and I like to enjoy it physically as well. So uh, most of the time I, I laying down to get the good level for photography and my neck after a day I get headache and I, I, I enjoy to be there but I, I didn't, didn't enjoy the process to be just in the tent and uh, looking up like this the whole day. So that's why I start to make a little bit comfortable hides. And then also, let's say, the, the air condition and floor heating are, are uh, small things. But if you spend uh, a thousand hours uh, in a height, which I did it uh, many times, then you need this, this comfort. And it's not just comfort. I know you like your technology too, don't you? I mean, didn't you develop software for, for controlling the lighting for night photography from inside a hide using your mobile phone? I like that kind of technique, which is the simple as this pen. If you make it more complex with touch screens and uh, wires uh, uh, broken, it sooner or later it will be broken. And if you are uh, hosting uh, or organizing a big system, end of the day you just uh, 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 
servicing and servicing and you cannot create anymore. So I, I like simple things, but uh, anything we do, I try to do as simple as possible. Um, and uh, sometimes funny things are com coming up uh, with the remote control things and then homemade systems, which looks uh, very complicated from uh, outside, but they are very, very simple. I have to say, for me, the thing that's taken Hydes to a whole other level is your use of one-way glass, in which one side is totally traditional, while the other side has a, has a reflective layer. And I think that was a complete game-changer. It introduced a whole new age of invisibility for the wildlife photographer. And I think it's become one of the great contributions to wildlife photography. Um, tell me more about how that came about. The simplest idea, I think, uh, I was sitting in the height uh, after five years I started photography and uh, I was wondering, I, uh, I can't enjoy it so much because uh, the animals, they cannot see, but I also cannot see the animals just in a small hole or in the viewfinder of the camera. And uh, I was thinking, how can I uh, change it? And I just uh, went for the biggest uh, glass company. I bought uh, samples and I, I make tests, which is the border when I can see out nicely without losing too much light. And uh, the birds or animals, they, they cannot see inside. It was a, a few weeks uh, testing. I got the right angle of the glass, uh, learned a lot of things. And, uh, and then it changed the action photography completely because then the heights start to be looking a different way then we can make big windows two meters three meter four meter big windows five uh, half meter uh, high and then uh, it start to be a movie not just uh, not just hide yourself uh, in a small place because uh, you can feel yourself as you wouldn't be in the hide just uh, sitting and be invisible and it's uh, it's a huge help for me as an aside, another huge project I remember you doing is something a, a little bit different to do with ground squirrels. Didn't you borrow 150 ground squirrels from Budapest Airport and then dig literally thousands of holes for them around your house? The airport was very happy. We, we bring them away because it's a good uh, food for predators and they have a lot of problems with foxes and, uh, and uh, harriers and uh, buzzards. And uh, together with the National Park, we made a rewilding project to, to bring back a few animals and see how they react. So after five years now, I have uh, 3,000 uh, ground squirrels in my garden. <laughs> I know you have slowly bought land around your house and now have about 14 hectares, I think. Um, and now you're trying to make it as wildlife friendly as you possibly can many kinds of nest boxes uh, for bats, for different kinds of birds, for uh, we making uh, big holes for uh, bee eaters and uh, uh, St. Martins. I spend my time and my energy and my money uh, to creating uh, habitats and uh, nesting areas and uh, sometimes the, the animals they appreciate it and I, I'm happy to, to see them. hope you can get what I mean. I, uh, I would be miserable if I when I leave, I, I wouldn't leave a better environment than when I get it. So from a photographic point of view, you prefer your own garden to far-flung places elsewhere in the world? Of course, I wish uh, to be a traveller and, and see uh, variable wildlife around the, the globe. But after I, I visit uh, 56 countries, oh my God, uh, I... I feel uh, still my favorite place is, is my, my garden. To travel is always nice, but uh, you, uh, you cannot find those uh, games uh, on, on, a, on a way. Because when you travel, you have a short time uh, and you don't have uh, such uh, high knowledge uh, about those animals. So, so you, can, you can be a tourist and, and, uh, and see them uh, in, a, in a short time. But... Uh, if you have a small garden, you can go back uh, every year, every season. Uh. I have to say, you do seem like one of those people who somehow fits more than 24 hours into every day. I love my job. And uh, as i not counting the numbers of the hides, i do not counting the hours. When I'm getting tired, I go to sleep. When I'm getting hungry, I go to eat. But there are no uh, uh, 
a daily uh, routine. Well, that's it from superhuman Benson Marte. I remember once at a lecture, somebody said to him that he's incredibly lucky to be so talented, and his response was fantastic. He said, no, 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 what, what you think of as talent is just purely persistence and determination, and he's got a lot of both of those, that's for sure. Well, that's it for this week. We'll be talking about hides again over the coming months. Thanks very much for watching.